Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute and let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Solutions Info. I'm so glad that you could join us today. We have a great show for you. This show is for you, the family caregiver. If you're caring for someone that has memory loss, Alzheimer's, other forms of dementia, you know it's not easy. And people that don't walk in your shoes really sometimes don't have any good idea of what you're going through, how to help you, what to say, what to do. So this show is for family caregivers to learn more about caregiving, to get tips and maybe help you with your challenges, and also for others that want to know more about dementia and Alzheimer's and caregiving, so perhaps they can help you too. So thank you for joining me today. We have a great show. This show will show a daughter and a son, both adult children of a mom who has Alzheimer's, who lived with the children's stepfather, who was the primary caregiver. And we're going to be talking about some of the issues that happens when an elderly spouse takes on the job of caregiving, some of the challenges that happen, some of the things that are really unbelievable that can happen, and how the adult children then have to step in and take care of everything so that things will work out and people can cope. Uh, caregiving is very complicated. There's no one size fits all. There's no black and white answer. Everyone's situation is different. So we hope by bringing these stories to you that you can not only learn, but perhaps identify with some of the stories to know that you're not alone, that people understand and people are there to help and to care. And so it is my great pleasure to bring to you today my special guests. Uh, we have Roz and Brian. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm very happy that you're here. You two are siblings, your brother, sister. Okay. Right. And you have a mom who has Alzheimer's and she's about 87 now. Okay. So we're going to start perhaps back before you all got involved with everything um, in your parents' lives, uh, because this is where the story begins. So we're going to go back in time. And I first met you, actually, uh, Roz, back in 2012. Right. And you came to visit me at Arden Courts, and we talked about mom, and she was living at home with your stepfather. And so, some things were starting to happen. Now, she had been diagnosed, and stepdad was taking care of her as the primary caregiver, but things started changing. What was kind of the turning point that made you come to visit an assisted living to perhaps check it out? Well, they had been in a car accident uh, about two, three years after they got married, and my mother was severely injured. And after that car accident, she really never recovered, and she started showing signs of Alzheimer's. Um, about two or three years later, they had a second car accident. Oh, boy. And the second car accident, unfortunately, triggered a lot of things, and that's when I really noticed her memory loss, and she was going through a lot of trauma and my poor stepfather was going through the trauma too and he was battling to cope and we had to bring in some outside aids to help 
Now, before that, he didn't want AIDS, I understand. He wanted no one, but because of the accident and my mom's very fragile state, and she was doing a lot of things that he couldn't cope with, we had to bring in someone, but he would only allow it temporarily. So we had the temporary people that came in, and when she and she started getting a little better, so they let her go. He was very anti-AIDS, and he was anti-homes. What were some of the things, if you can remember, that mom was doing that dad couldn't cope with? Well, she started losing her, you know, she couldn't, the toilet training kind of thing. Yes. And um, even her walking got really bad, so we had to get her a walker. Uh, she was finding it hard to go to the bathroom. She, she was, was finding he it. He was sent bathed to her. Yeah. He, she stopped bathing. You know, he um, needed a lot of assistance. She really there. started not being able to take care of herself. Mm hmm. So and he, so he and had he, to do everything. He right. stepped cooking. in. Cooking. Well. He took, her, cook. took care of her. He cooked. He shopped. Took her, shopped, did everything. And he took her out for dinner every single night. Wow. Yeah. So you either go out to dinner or you cook, you know, yeah. hot dogs and beans, I right. guess, right? And he took her to the hairdresser every week, too. So he took good care of her. Very. Yes. Very good now they're in their 80s at this point. Yeah. Wow. So that that was a hard a hard thing for him to do. Yeah. But he also wasn't well himself, was he? No, he developed pancreatic cancer, but a few years later, I'd, I'd say he's later 80s. Mm -hmm. And it was a slow When people get pancreatic cancer when they're older, a lot of them it's much slower. Progressing. And yeah. progress you know in progressing and uh he kind of took care. He was his own doctor, advocate for everything. He took vitamins and read up on everything and gave my mother coconut oil and him everything for what she had Nicotine and everything patch. for what he had. I've never seen two people take so many pills. But it obviously worked because he held it off. And at 92, unfortunately, he succumbed to the disease. So he passed away. Yeah. Now, that leads us into another whole story because... Now, mom has Alzheimer's, and your stepdad is taking care of her, and his, his health is failing as it goes along. Even though the cancer was slow progressing, it still takes a toll on him because oh, yeah. he is um, in his late 80s at this point in time. And mom, you know, used to call you because she used to be able to dial your number and call you, and you work, and Brian, you work, so you both are adult children that have full-time jobs, so, you know, you're you're depending on your stepfather to take care of mom, Absolutely. you know, and, yeah. and I know you supported him in that role. Um, actually, I, what I think is interesting, though, to go back is when you first came to see me, you were telling me that at that point in time, mom was actually accusing your stepdad um, of stealing, of having an affair. Um, she, and, and I guess that took a toll on him, too. It did. It was all part of the illness. Mm -hmm. But... Um was laughable but every time he went out or did anything she'd call me up and tell me he's having an affair or he's doing this or mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. and uh, it was very upsetting for him mm -hmm. of course of uh, course but she used to call and tell you those yeah, things okay yeah. and now years later his disease of cancer has progressed her disease of alzheimer's has progressed yeah. and then tell me what happened one day when well he actually even got her into clinical trials, by the way. She okay. was and being studied at FAU in the clinical trials, and she was doing pretty well. Anyway, one night they came to me for dinner on the Friday night, and they went home, and I didn't really hear much from them on the weekend because he was very self-sufficient. He used they used to go out, do do their stuff. He was so still driving. He was still driving, yeah. and, and their aids only came during the week because he cool. thought they didn't he have could AIDS handle at that it. Point. No. Oh, no, no, they did. Uh -huh. They had an aid, but the aids only came during they the week. They only came during the week. They didn't come on the day week. Locked hours. Yeah. Okay. So Friday night, he drove home from my house, and unbeknown to us, on Saturday morning, he fell, slipped, and fell in the doorway between his bedroom and the family room, living room, and. My mother, he called her and she came and she got so frightened and she couldn't cope with it, got herself into bed and did nothing, couldn't call us, couldn't do anything. And they were found on Monday by the aid, two days later, where he had been lying on the floor. He was still not up and my mother was lying in the bed and they hadn't eaten or drunk anything for two whole days and two whole nights. Because mom couldn't call you. Yeah. Either she couldn't... Or she just lost it. Or she know. lost the yeah, ability, whatever it was, that prevented her from being able yeah. to dial the phone because she had not been calling you much anymore and she couldn't even dial 911. No. 
And did um, stepfather pass away there on the floor? No, no. We no. actually got him uh, into a hospital. And then from the hospital, he landed up in a rehab. And unfortunately, he just couldn't recover. And he passed shortly after. It was a couple of weeks later. So, so now we had to bring weeks, in three aides to on a day Three aides to take care of what stepfather was, was doing, doing but, on but his own. I think this will come out later, but this took about five weeks. So he was paying bills and, and managing the house, and then he got ill. So all this kind of, the, all this stopped. What What can you say about the fact that mom was there with him? He's on the floor. He She can't help him. He can't help her. No one knows and about it. And nobody knows, and which is the most knows frightening about it. Can thing you just all... imagine how terrible that, oh my God. that would be? I mean, and, and oh. nobody's, you know, visiting, so nobody knows. No, There's no horrible. AIDS on and the weekend. And they lived pretty far from us. Well, I, think, I think he did try and ask her to bring him his cell phone, her bring, bring her, bring her cell, his cell phone. Mm-hmm. But I think this is also the importance of that life alert where mm-hmm. you can press a button. Mm-hmm. She couldn't I mean, even do that. Yeah, because... She, she could, she we thought she could, but she couldn't. You know, so you really, if people are on their own, they really need to be able to tap into help when they need it very easily. She wasn't even able to understand, was, right. go get the cell phone Correct. and bring it to me. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, they, they hear the words, of course, right. but they just can't connect the Correct. dots to understand what And I what think she was is. in shock. From what had him lying on the floor. And she was probably she, afraid, too. Yeah. She was probably she was. very I, 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 full of fear. Too, she said she was. She said, I just, it was a big shock. Yeah, big shock. So this it's that's a terrible thing to happen, and I'm sorry that they had to go through that. Oh. But, you know, this is sometimes what's happened, that people um, don't even think about things like this that could happen because it can happen anytime yes. to anybody, Well, really. that was always my biggest fear. I used to worry about them. Yes, and this became a turning point. So we're going to talk about what happens next, and uh, we'll be right back after this first commercial break. Okay. Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888-478-2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888-478-2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. Somewhere at the corner of bewildered and confused is a lost mother, a father, a sibling, a grandparent. Wandering is a common symptom of Alzheimer's or related dementias and can often make those who care for a loved one feel just as lost. If you're looking for a place that's safe and secure, look to Arden Courts. Memory care is all we do. We know. We understand. We can help. To learn more, visit Arden-Courts.com. Arden Courts follows equal housing opportunity guidelines. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. 565-1470 and talk with Marcia. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. And I'm here with guests Roz and Brian, and they are siblings whose mother has Alzheimer's, 87 years old, uh, whose um, their stepfather actually was the primary caregiver. Uh, he ultimately passed away. Um, but I, you made a comment earlier, Brian, that um, the disease... Um, killed 
killed him? Was, are you talking about the Alzheimer's disease? I know he had cancer, but the Alzheimer's, the stress, you, you're relating I, that to I the think, fact? The thing I'd like to, you know, get out to people is that you, you want to be respectful of your parents and try and help them. But sometimes listening to them too much is you're not helping them. And um, he really took too much on himself. By, uh, by he was, you know, a tremendous man and, and giving care for her. And he, and he wasn't a well man himself. So, you know, from his point of view, I think it would have been better for him had he had much more help. And, and also for her, I think that she felt very isolated. And he was trying his best, and, you know, one can fault him for that at all. But had she been also maybe, I think the, the, the social aspect uh, helped, you know. And having it, other people yeah, around. Mm -hmm. Was contributed to to the illness. Right, as and well. he, he was a little stubborn and wanted to do it his way and, and you know, his personality. And it's right. you can't tell them, you know, what right. to do. You can only make yes. some suggestions yes. as adult children Correct. and be there to support yes. them. But yeah. you yeah. can't really take over because at that point in time, he was in charge of mom. Right. And, he's, and he was a very sound mom, but... But, you know, he was taking way too much responsibility himself, way too much, and to his own and, I think, mom's detriment. detriment. Yeah. So, unfortunately, then he passed away. And at this point, um, everything fell to you two as um, the adult children as far as caring for mom now because she can't care for herself and her husband's gone. And th you said, too, that he was resistant not only with getting care in the home, but he had never actually wanted to her to leave the home. He wanted to keep her in the home as long as possible. And we know what happens with that. And, of course, unfortunately, the accident happened and, and all, which led to, you know, the whole we, down spiral. We actually spiral. kept her in the house for about maybe two months, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But we realized it was just not possible with caregivers around the clock. Uh, you know, out of respect to, to his yeah. wishes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and just... And our own, I guess, guilt. Mm -hmm. But you also well, lived too dealing. far away. We lived. She lived yeah. in Lantana. We I was in Delray. Yeah. Took me 40, 50 minutes to get there. Mm -hmm. If something happened and I had to get there quickly, I couldn't. Right. So, what was your experience with having help in the home? You had three shifts, right? We had three different aides plus a woman that was kind of a caretaker. Mm -hmm. she, and they were, they used to change shifts and come in. And, and isn't like, it amazing that you had to hire three people to, to do, do the work what, that he did? Of one, one person, person of what your stepfather yeah. did. Right. Yeah. And and that just goes to show that, you know, he did obviously, you know, yes. overburden himself. No, I feel, I feel himself. badly for what he, he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And when the private caregivers were in the home for a few months um did it go smoothly or did you have any bumps in the road ever no well sometimes some of them couldn't come in at the last minute so the last minute i was quickly calling an agency to bring in another person then you don't know who you're bringing in so it was very difficult mm -hmm. and, and we would go pick up my mom and take her out and she started having accidents you know and it was very difficult to get her in and out of the car because she was scared she was going to fall so it just became a very difficult task. Mm -hmm. And when you're so, working, I was working, and now you're having to call and I'm agencies to worry all the time right? and run up and down there with meals mm -hmm. and organize food for them as well. Mm -hmm. And it became a, almost impossible. It was just too difficult. Yes. So that's when we started looking around. Okay. So you know, there's always a turning point. Right. We were resistant to it because it was out of his wishes that he actually did not want to. And, you know, but that was his perspective. Because he came from old school. Yes. Probably correct. where right. people that went into a place was nursing home. And back then in his day, they were so nice and pretty as some of them are now. Yeah. And not only that, Brian lives in Cleveland, Ohio. So... For the, the, he only for the comes summer. here for the winter. Right. Mm -hmm. So all the rest of the month, I had to worry about it. And it, it really became very, very difficult. And I, I really wanted her to be closer to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really started looking. Mm -hmm. And okay. we looked at a number of other homes. And a lot of them were dreadful. And we came across yours. And you're right over the road, firstly, from where I live, which was a big plus. 
And secondly, the warmth, the love, and the feeling of just one level. Each pe- All the people had their own little sections. It, was, it just had a lovely, warm feeling. And we all agreed. My, my sister-in-law, my brother and I came and looked, and we had looked at a lot of places, and we, we thought that this was the right move. And so and your it, family all came together because yes. it is a family affair it's now. It's definitely it's a family affair. Um, Even the caregiver, the one caregiver, was involved with us. <laughs> because she knew she mom. she knew my mom and, and she, she was very bonded, concerned you know, and yeah. she had bonded. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at this point now, you all have power of attorney for your branded. mom? Brian has Lord power. Mm. Okay. Oh, yes, actually both. Did. All yeah. right. Yeah. Because dad was, the, your stepdad was the primary caregiver. Right. But now, now you have yeah. to take over and have power of right. attorney oh, to take care of her. Yeah. So you're now in the position to make all of these financial decisions, health care decisions. There's a lot. And it's Brian a lot. Brian can talk to you about that. Yeah, a lot going right. on. Right. So now you've made the decision to, to move mom. How were you feeling? Brian, you mentioned a word earlier, guilt. Well, I think it's a combination of, of guilt and, and anger. Um, I, I know when, you know, also we went through quite a lot of, I say, you know, tough time with, with her husband, with, with my stepdad. And he was a really wonderful man. You know, dealing with that, his illness and then his death and then the, the caregivers and then picking up all the loose ends as much as you can, and you, you don't know what was dropped and what wasn't. We'll come back to that. But, um, you know, I think the best advice I could give people is that this is something that you need to do, and the sooner you do it, the better, you know. But and then, but also there's an anger aspect that you, you, you're worrying about the level of care. And that, as time set goes by, that will settle down, mm-hmm. and you'll realize the care actually is as good as it gets. You know, and and uh, but, I think that's yeah. a you know something that a lot of of um, families worry about is you know what's the care going to be like, and it's usually never exactly the way it was done in their own home because you think about it, it's, they have a one on one person, you know, and but it killed your stepdad right. to do all of that. Um, it it may not be exactly how it was done before, or maybe at the exact time that something was done. But you, I guess what you're saying is you have to realize that it will get done. Right. And mm-hmm. there's the adjustment because obviously the person's going from their own home mm-hmm. into one room, you know, but then, but then the pluses are there's a much better social aspect. And, you know, and there's, there's people 24-7. And, Plus they have a lot of activities. Yeah, and the activities and, you know. Well, and I think that was a big plus for, for mom. Right. But every family worries when they're, bringing mom or dad into a new environment to live, they're afraid that their parent is going to be angry at them, you know, yes. that they're going to be upset with them. And, you know, I I, I mean, I remember, you know, a, a resident one time saying to the son, you know, I didn't raise you to treat me like this. And they, the, the resident themselves, the patient resident, we call them residents, they live with us, they know how to put a guilt trip on the uh, adult so, children. They know uh, how to push adult children's buttons, and they're very good at that. And they're actually different with you than they are with others that are taking care of them. But I'm curious, in your own words, um, what you thought about that. Were you apprehensive how mom was going to uh, actually take to it, first of all? And then were you apprehensive about how she would adjust and how long it would take her to yeah. adjust? I think we were extremely apprehensive and I, I, I remember coming in with her and saying to everybody there, oh gosh, I'm, I, I just hate to see what she, how she's going to be if I leave you here. And surprisingly, I brought her in and from the time she got there, it was home. She, she, the one day she said to me, I want to go home. And I said to her, this is your home. And after that, she... She, every time I say to her, are you okay? She says, I'm very happy. So she's very happy. She's adjusted very well. And she's been there almost two years now. Wow. So Time flies. Yeah. And, and, and it's given found, us a lot of peace of mind. And she found a friend, you know. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. So your fears were really not... You know, valid that you found out because, because unknown. she it's, just, it's unknown. an unknown. I was very, yeah. very nervous and apprehensive uh, yeah. how she was and, going to be. And I think every family feels that. And 
you know, I, I guess the, the good news here is that it's not your worst fear because there are ways that, unbeknownst to, to family members, how the staff can can take that person and integrate them into the new routine and get them comfortable. And I think usually about the first three days when a new resident realizes that they are happy, you know, they're happy because they get what they need. People are nice to them. They realize and, and they feel safe. Yeah. They can start that transitioning, you know, because I think the first three days are pretty critical. They have to realize that they're okay. Yeah. And then they do the transitioning, which takes I think takes the whole thing about, is feeling safe. Mm -hmm. I think she felt safe. She felt safe. Yeah. And that was important for her. Probably um, somewhere in her mind feeling that, gosh, you know, I was alone when my husband fell. There was nobody around. Nobody could help me. And now she's surrounded by a lot of people. So that probably gave her a sense of security, knowing that if something happened, that she wouldn't be alone. You know, I'm not sure at that stage if she could even comprehend that. Mm -hmm. She had really even, I mean, when he got sick and when that happened, maybe the shock, she got worse. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I think also our only regret that we ever had was that we should have maybe done it sooner. Not, not, we waited longer than we should. We and waited you know what, how do you know that? You don't, you don't know. know. How, the yeah. hindsight. You know. don't know yeah. that, but... Right. So I guess your message now is do it before you think you need to and don't wait for a crisis because we're always yeah. pushing people not to wait for a crisis because right. things and are... And then it could be too late. Well, it's the same as... This you could know, have been now, a lot worse. Yeah, it was it's bad a, enough. Right. It's the same as a person driving. You know, at some point you've got to take those keys away. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, they're yeah. going to have a bad accident and hurt themselves and someone else. Yeah, and you it's know. never easy to do. No. And it's, you know, I think sometimes people try to procrastinate because they know it's going to be a, a job that they don't want to face. It, it's taking away the car keys or putting a parent into an assisted living because they can't really care for themselves. And nobody wants to take on that responsibility or even think about it because, you know, it's mm. it's hard to think about. Mm. It's hard to right. imagine. It's but painful. Right. Right. I think in hindsight, mom should have been in a daycare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we would have, have given him a friends. relief, and it would have helped a lot more. Right, it would have given him some respite. Yes, absolutely. Let him. Yeah. Do and she, and she used to be very social, and I think when she went, when they got married, and she went to live, you know, with him, there was no social life really. A lot of the friends dropped them because they were far away now. Mm -hmm. So it was just really the two of them and the family. And I really think in a lot of ways, sometimes that harmed her because she, she needed that interaction. Yes, yeah, because people can start to withdraw, turn into themselves. And I think that's what she did. Yeah. Well, speaking of social life, um, on our next segment, we're going to be talking about how your mom met a special friend and <laughs> how love bloomed yes. again for her. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll hear all about that. <laughs> Do you need the advice of an elder? Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Wandering. Being unable to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's or related dementias, even among their caregivers. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to Arden Courts. Memory care is all we do. We know. We understand. We can help. To learn more, visit arden-courts.com. Arden Courts follows equal housing opportunity guidelines. Somewhere at the corner of bewildered and confused is a lost mother, a father, a sibling, a grandparent. 
1-800-273-8843 and you'll feel right at home. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. At this time, I'd like to thank our national sponsor, Arden Court's Memory Care Communities. Arden Court's cares about the resident and they care about the caregiver. They actually have 10 Arden Courts in Florida and 52 scattered all across the United States to help you, the family caregiver. One of the ways that Arden Courts helps is they offer free educational seminars and free resource information, in addition to support groups, which are free as well. But if you would like to have a little extra in your home, this is a wonderful book that Arden Courts is offering you free of charge just for the asking. It's called The 36-Hour Day. It's a wonderful resource. It's all about dementia, caregiving, Alzheimer's, and it is full of tips and explanations and information that any caregiver would like to have. So all you have to do is call Arden Courts on their toll-free number, which is 888-478-2410. Tell them that you heard about this on the Caregiver Solutions Info Show, and they'll be glad to get your information and mail one right to you. So I'm here with Brian and Roz, and they are siblings, and we're talking about um, mom and and all the uh, trials and tribulations up to this point that they've had to face with mom's illness. So we get to the point now where everything is good because uh, Brian and Roz have moved mom into um, actually Arden Courts of Delray, where I am, and I'm very um, happy to have the pleasure of knowing your mom and and, and knowing you all. Um, but we talked about the stimulation, the socialization, and I love the rest of this story because mom actually met a f- lots of friends, but she had one favorite male friend. Tell me about that. Well, one day I came in to visit her, and she was sitting in the activity room holding this gentleman's hand. And I was like, what is going on here? And it was the cutest thing because he was in as well. And he was a lot younger than her, unfortunately. You know, he's ill as well. And the two of them struck up a friendship and uh, they became companions. And he became the most wonderful companion because they were always together. He would push her wheelchair he would feed her if she didn't finish her dinner. He, they kind of, I think he took more care of her than she did of him. He was really the most caring, sweet man. And I think it gave her a lot more to carry on just having a companion and having somebody who cared about her. I think both of them, in fact. Yes, I, I know that um, the gentleman actually used to call her his wife. Yeah. Right. And he referred to her as it's his, his wife, wife. I know. which was very, very sweet. And right. you would see them together all the time. Yeah. And they really missed each other when um, the gentleman yes. got sick and right. he had to go in the hospital. Right. And I know they missed each other terribly. But but what you're feeling about um, your mom having a gentleman friend at the age of 85 years old. Can I tell you that I think for any of them to have a gentleman friend, a woman friend, it's very positive because it gives them a feeling of somebody cares, somebody's there for them. And to me, the power of touch and the power of just having somebody there that you can even just talk to and companionship is extremely important. And And of course, that's a lot of what's kept her going. Yes. And of course, they both had dementia, uh, but they were probably about the same cognitive level. I, I think so they could now he was more functioning than her they could relate to each other yeah, yeah. and he really did take take her under his, his wing, wing. Mm-hmm. unfortunately he passed away recently mm-hmm. but it was really very sweet so you were glad for that yes that's good yeah in I the know. beginning we were a little shocked mom's got a new boyfriend <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then I actually thought I think she thought he was her so, husband, her ex, her late husband. Yeah, but it's the last thing you think would ever happen. You know? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know what? Why not? Yeah, yeah. You if know, they're happy. That's all that counts. In this case, you know, you give your approval. It's a little more difficult when 
a spouse comes in and Absolutely. sees their spouse holding, holding hands with her. somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And, you know, that's sometimes a, a tough pill to swallow because, you know, they're feeling left out and they're caring for this other person and not for me. But I think people have to understand, um, like you just said, Brian, that mom thought the gentleman was maybe her late husband yeah. and she didn't realize, she just knew that somebody there that, that she cared cares. about and, and that cared about her but when you have a spouse situation and you see that oh, a, it's really hard for another spouse to accept and i've had some spouses over the last 16 years that i've been you know with um art and courts where some of them get so jealous <laughs> and don't like it and get very upset and don't want their spouse to be near another person and then i've had others that say hey i think it's great go for it if yeah. it makes him happy if it makes her right. happy then i'm happy so, you know, to each his own, but it's, hmm. it's, it is, like you said, when you first saw her, that was like kind of a shock, you know, to see. In fact, so much, so, I, I think I took it better than the caregiver. The one caregiver came in and she was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> she even took a picture Aww. of the two of them to show us. Aww. And we didn't react as badly as she did. So, yeah. We've just felt companionship is important. Companionship is very important, yeah. very important. So now mom is um, happy, she's doing activities, she's being taken care of. What, how has your peace of mind changed since she... Tremendously, mm -hmm. tremendously, because we know she's in excellent hands. We know if anything happens, we will get a phone call straight away if we are not there. Mm -hmm. And um, I just trust Arden Court implicitly. Yeah, it was, uh, I think they've yeah. been fantastic. And so much so we had an incident this weekend where my mother was in pain. We got an instant phone call. She was rushed to the commu Delray Community Center. My brother and I got there. And thank God it was nothing that serious. They brought her back, but they were on top of it. I know sometimes when uh, we talk to families and we call them, the first thing they say is like, is mom okay? You know, and we say, like, yep, they're fine. We're, you know, we're calling about something else. But, but it, it is good to know that someone is there to you know, to take Such it on peace of mind. and oh. have, give you that peace of mind because you're you're working, Brian, half the time you're up in Ohio, so oh. you can't be here. And I think that that's really important so that, Brian, when you are here, you can enjoy mom's company oh. and, and, and be good. with her. And, and Roz, you have your own business. Yeah. So, you know, I'm actually just retiring. <laughs> well, good for you. Which is good. I'll good, spend more time. Good for it. you. Then yeah. we'll see you more a little more yeah. often. Um, Brian, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you have an expertise in because you are an independent financial advisor um, in your career uh, and you kind of lend a different spin onto this whole situation, uh, uh, the story way uh, back when because, you know, being from the financial field, uh, tell me about what you found when you had to step in and handle your mom uh, and uh, your stepdad's uh, affairs. I, I think it's... You know, I'll give you some examples. We, there's two parts to it. The first is is the running of the home. And, and and people forget about this and there's some there's some pitfalls. I mean, one example was with a uh, stepdad getting ill, um, some bills left were left unpaid and the homeowners 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 insurance was late. And uh, I don't know if people know the state of insurance in Florida, but Homeowners insurance, the, the companies outside of Florida really want to get out of Florida. They've been kept here on a grandfather clause, but if they could cancel you for any technicality, they're going to do that. And and the, it was on the house, it was cancelled. And there was absolutely no, it was a couple days late. Um, they had the technical legal side to cancel it, and they were out. There was no way they were coming back. And homeowners insurance, you know, you worry about, God forbid, a fire, if the house burns down or anything like that, or theft. And it was very, very difficult to reinstate the insurance, especially if, if the insurance companies get wind of that, you know, the house is either not going to be lived in or, or if someone there, you know, is, is not there around the clock. So, you know, things like that. And you, so you really got to get hold of all the bills and check things, even from... If you have caregivers at home, I think you've got to make sure that the valuables are, are removed from the house. Um, and then even also, most people also then hide 
you know, funds and and valuables around the house and money, and then you got to try and figure where that is hidden. And did, I've, did seen, you I've seen that twice, yes. in fact. You yes. found some yes. money hidden yes. in your mom's house? Also, with house? my, with my yeah. father-in-law, we also found that a lot. Really? You know, and, uh, the hard thing. Yes, they they get people, older. they get a little they bit insecure. People are still there. And he also, the, the challenge we had as well was he didn't trust banks, so in his wisdom, he had 20 banks, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> bank accounts. Well, so, that, that another stems thing. from back in, he was from the era uh, recent, of the Depression. He was from the Depression era. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he could save a dime, you know, he was a, he was a very, he was a wonderful man, a very honorable, and but frugal. Mm-hmm. You know, and he learned to save. A, 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 if he could save 10 cents, he would save it, you know. So and he'd rather put the money under a mattress than necessarily all of it in a bank. And then he had, had different multiple banks. bank accounts. How Correct. many did he end up having? Uh, there, was, uh, there was the most probably over 20 accounts. 20 but, different <laughs> bank yeah. accounts? Believe me, this took me a lot. And the banks, you know, when you walk in with the paperwork, they're not always friendly, you know. So the power of attorney, your ID, uh, here's the the will, the death certificates. This is a big challenge, especially if you do it 20 times. And even I remember walking into a bank with a safe deposit bar. They didn't want to close it. So I mean, so how do you get them to close something when – and I had all the credentials. The guy just gave me a hard time. And I said, well, if you want to just leave it – leave it there, leave it. But no one's going to pay it anymore. But uh, Well, I guess in a way it's good that – they're scrutinizing who's coming in to make changes because there is a lot of fraud, you know, when it's, you're dealing right, with elderly right. people and people are vulnerable and they're at risk for being taken advantage of. But here you are as the legitimately. son. Legitimately. The, you're the son. You're the power of attorney. Um, so even with that, you're saying it was a, a difficult process. Right. You know, yeah. even things like, is there a firearm in the house? You know, so, you know, where, where is that? You you need to secure that. You know, where's the keys for the the safe deposit box? So there's a lot of challenges from that point of view um, in terms of getting hold of, of everything, especially when someone was managing it and and the, other, the spouse, one spouse is not in control of it, and then when the person was managed, it is not there anymore. There's a transition period, and there's a gap. That could be very problematic mm-hmm. so, in terms of, you know. But he had given Brian power yeah, yeah. over everything before. Yeah, but, 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 but uh, you know, but you're also dealing with his illness mm-hmm. and and his death. And so you don't want to, like, the, again, overstep your boundaries. No, you, yes, correct. Mm-hmm. You know, and so then, the, you know, so, and then you, you know, it was just unfortunate the, the way the homeowner's insurance fell, but that was a real, you know, most other things you can, you know, and also, if, if it's a car payment or lease, and you know those are Which other challenges, you yeah, you have to deal with all that. Uh, but it also helps to have an attorney who knows what they're doing, as well. And if and and we'll get and I think we'll, we'll get to that. But it, and I'll get on to the financial aspects of a portfolio and the stock side, mm-hmm. which I think I have a lot of points that could give you insight into. Good. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I have to ask you: the question is this burning inside me. Um, where did you find money stashed away? What was the most um, uh, strange place that they hid money? In drawers? In, in, the, the, in the liquor cabinet? In uh, books? Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know. Bookshelf? Yeah. It, it was all strange places. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, so they always say that when you're cleaning out a parent's home uh, to look through everything, flip open every correct. single Pockets. book. Pockets. Everything. I was... Uh, strange thing that happened in my family my mother actually hid some jewelry in the hem of a curtain in her bedroom how would you ever find that you know and i don't know if she told somebody or somehow they found it but she actually hid it in In the hem in the hem of a curtain in her bedroom so they do hide things and you do need to be aware that it's a possibility that things are hidden so well that you might not be able to find them I guess this is where you know maybe ignorance is bliss because you know the (laughs) stuff that you didn't find you might have only found the tip of the iceberg I don't know yeah so you gotta check everything (laughs) I mean you know pocketbooks and when I know when my sister and I cleaned out my mom's closet you know the pocketbooks I mean she had things in the 
pocketbook. Yeah. And she People used could. to buy lotto tickets. And so I'm like, well, I hope all of these are not winners because <laughs> if they are, it's too late now. Yeah. You know, it's, exactly. The time has gone by. You know, that's exactly. the, that ship has sailed. Yeah. So, But you, th- another little tip to look everywhere, check everything, because you may find things that you had no idea. So uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, Brian, who is an uh, independent financial advisor, is going to tell us from his perspective what families should do to take care of these things ahead of time so it's not so hard later. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888-478-2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. And we're back with Caregiver Solutions Info. And my guests, Roz and Brian, are here talking about their mom and all that they've had to go through dealing with mom's, not only her dementia, but all of her issues, including financial issues. So Brian, lucky for the family that you are a financial advisor because apparently um, your stepdad made it not so difficult, not so easy, actually made it difficult for you to gather everything together by having so many bank accounts. And you talked about how hard it was to do that. So what are some uh, pieces of advice that you could give to other caregivers of yeah. or adult children in the same situation to make their lives a little easier going forward. Okay, um, I think you know. Years back, I was in a brokerage office. I'm just giving this as an example, and actually, he was a doctor, and he brought his wife in because he had actually a terminal illness. And he to the to this broker, this particular stockbroker, and he told his wife whatever this broker recommends, she must do. But unfortunately, this broker was a really bad broker, and he passed away, and and he really did a bad job for her. But the moral of the story is that you should you need to review everything and take nothing for granted. There's two aspects. One is. I always believe a spouse should know what's going on if they, if they, if, if you know, if they, if they have the capability, if they have the capability, and the spouse should also always know. But even you know, our stepdad, he 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 did manage, and he was a very meticulous man. He did a good job, but he wasn't trained in finances. So the other thing is, he wanted more income, which you know, with low bond rates, and who doesn't? But he got overly concentrated in oil partnerships, master limited partnerships, which in 2015 dropped about 31%. You know, so you you really need to look at these things. So when I looked at this, I immediately liquidated part of them. 
and took control because this is this is my field of the portfolio. You know, people think they understand something, but so you've got to look at the advisor, get a second opinion, get someone that you know and trust that's honest to look at to re look at things because this is you know, the money that's left for the care for mom. So just like in a medical situation, if you get a diagnosis or you have a, a recommendation from a doctor, you sometimes want to go get a second opinion from the doctor to make sure that what they say is right. So you're saying the same way, get a exactly. second opinion from exactly. a financial e- advisor. Even if this is an advisor that's been with the family for 25 years or 30 years, you need to you need someone who really understands this stuff and understands your risk tolerance and understands what you need and 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 really looks at it like you know one thing with stepdad another example was in terms of the other investments he thought he'd be much more diversified if he had a lot of mutual funds now a lot of mutual funds could also cost you a lot of expenses which you don't need but also they correlate so you know you think you're diversified, but you're not. You know, just because you intended for mutual funds, a lot of them still correlate very highly with the market or a particular sector. So you really have to understand those risks, even bond risks. You know, in 1994, and we, we kind of at the same place, when interest rates rose a lot, bonds dropped 25%, and those were fairly conservative bonds. People don't realize the risks you take. So if you've got a total bond portfolio, you'd better understand the risks and have an advisor in your corner who understands those risks and is going to advise you appropriately. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good advice. I I like the fact that, you know, people I don't think think about getting a second opinion, you know, uh, because, you know, they're people take for granted, well, this is somebody we've known for a long time or someone that has handled my neighbor's um, issues, so I'll just go with him. But you really have to um, pick one like you would pick a doctor. Exactly. And, you know, don't be impressed by, say, the offices or the, or, you know, the say Persian rugs or having by the car he buys. That should actually unimpress you, you know, <laughs> in fact, uh, in terms of uh, what you want or what you're looking for. You really want someone that's, you know, that's honest and trustworthy and, and is experienced in the, in the particular and field. Honorable. Because, yeah, because this this is the nest egg and, and, and for, you know, obviously people are going to inherit the money, but you also need to get control over this. So looking backwards now, if you could have done anything different with your stepfather and mom's financial situation, what could you have done? That's a great question. Um, I would say, you know, you know, you never want to be intrusive. And, you know, and and in fact, maybe had I got involved early, you know, I wanted to, I was always offered my help and assistance, but, you, but sometimes you have to maybe impress upon the person that they're not getting younger and they need help in this regard. Yeah, it's hard for someone to yes. accept help and right. people sometimes want to, you know, be stubborn and independent because that's their personality or sometimes they just want to be a martyr and do everything themselves and it's really hard to do that but you you feel that maybe if you insisted a little bit more that maybe he would have relented a little bit yeah you know i think he might have welcomed it you know maybe Uh out of respect you you you, you're holding back but but uh, you know just much I, i think the same example was maybe we should have been a little bit more persistent with getting my mom you know, daycare help. Mm-hmm. You know, would have helped him earlier. and her, and her. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier. So, yeah. You know, but hindsight's twenty twenty. But yeah. those are things that you tend to. But I think also, as people get older, they seem to get more nervous and they want to hold on to their stuff. So they're scared to share. Yes. And it's wrong. Yes. They should open up because ultimately you're gonna the children. The family are going to have the problem later on. Rather, let them be open. I would say if, if you know, if there's a lot of finances involved, I think the sooner people get involved and understand it and for a transition, there could be some complicated investments mm-hmm. um, that you need to understand, mm-hmm. or there could be some complicated business involvements that or transition areas that you that, that you that you should talk about. Right, and it was important for 
you know, someone to step in and do this, like you said, because that was your mother's future care. Right. And things could have gone a, a lot differently. Right. And Correct. Gone south, and then you'd be in a worse position to have her, you know, being in a in a great place, and you know, and, uh, and right. not have to take her back home and do it yourself, which would have defeated everything. Right. You you know you also want to look at you could be in a good investment, but the expenses could be way too high. Mm-hmm. The brokerage firm could be a very good firm, but charging way too much or putting it in a, in a particular way. So there might be much better ways of doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really good advice. Um, right. l- before we close, we have a couple minutes left. <laughs> so um, any parting words, anything that either of you would like to say about, um, you know, the situation and, and, and how it turned out and any other words of wisdom that you might want to give? Um, Roz, I know you well, um, come visit mom. So, yeah. what, so what are some of your uh, your advice with coming to visit? Because I know you're in and out a lot. And a lot of people say, oh, I hate to visit because, you know, I, sh- I have to leave, you know. Or, you know, is it good enough just to come for a couple minutes? And I know. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely is. Because a lot of the time they don't even really know you're there. But the bottom line is when you come in, it just they do know you're there. And even if it's for a short time, I go and I'll hold her hand, I'll give her a kiss, and she'll tell me how much she loves me, and I'll tell her how much I love her. And even if it's a short time and she doesn't remember when I left, that warmth and that touch. It makes you both feel great. Both of us. That's wonderful. And she keeps telling me how much she loves me. Oh, well, I want to thank you both for coming today. I appreciate it very much. Your insight and uh, information was very, very good for our listeners. And I want to invite our listeners to uh, come back next week, same place, same time. And in the meantime, don't forget, give someone a hug because they need it and so do you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us for this week's Caregiver Solutions with Marsha Teal. Join us next week as Marsha, who has 15 years of Alzheimer's disease and dementia care experience, brings you more needed information to help with the care of your loved one. This show can be seen again on caregiversolutions.info and questions can be left on the site, which may be used on the program to help others. See you next week for more Caregiver Solutions. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.